Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. So, today this video is going to be more directed on the Grand Dam a little bit. So, um, I'm working on editing another video right now. I was helping Noah with his uh, 40th anniversary uh, Grand Prix. We went and picked it up before the transmission gave out on the Trailblazer. And so he's had it over at his house for like two or three weeks now. And yeah, so if y'all haven't seen that video, go check out that video. But so I, I went yesterday, we worked on the car, we got it running, and he brought me back over here. And he wanted to to see the Grand Am, so I popped the hood and I tried to start it. And he was like, hey bro, your coil over here is arcing and sure enough he got it on on video he sent it to me i'll put a a little clip of it in here go again oh i saw one yeah it's still doing it yeah right there but so anyways he was like yeah it's sparking right here so i pulled everything apart pulled i noticed that this one prong it's like kind of bent towards the coil and sure enough it is cracked right there around the base so this one's easy P coil is cracked and it made it it was making it to where it really didn't want to start it made it really hard to start the car and I tried putting electrical tape around it that didn't help do anything it was still grounding out on the bolt there so I just swapped it out with a factory coil that's painted red. I've got the other two right there. But yeah, I just swapped it out and it pretty much fired right up. So, but I still had the issue with after like 30 seconds, like anywhere between 10 to 30 seconds after it's starting, the oil pressure or the fuel pressure just goes down to zero and then it stalls out. And I didn't start having that issue with this car until... I changed the gauges out. I had changed the whole speedometer to one that had 111,000 miles instead of 250 or 260,000, whatever this one has. And so I, I went ahead and pulled. That's the one with the 111,000 miles. I just swapped it back out. And then I cleaned the steering wheel with some oxygen orange clean. This was nasty dirty. Even the the airbag still feels kind of sticky like it's not all the way clean yet but i got that cleaned i guess i'm gonna have to wipe down the gauges because i guess i got some overspray on the gauges but uh yeah i got that all swapped around so i just want to see if it makes this thing any easier to start all right so i got the keys looks like we've got two hundred and fifty seven thousand. I'm not hearing the fuel pump. No fuel pump at all. Nope. Fuel pump's not kicking on at all. Alright, well... It was kicking on with the other cluster, but that's okay. In the trunk of the GXP back here, well, I'll have to get in there, but I have the original pump that I that I pulled out whenever the car first started giving me issues after I swapped out that gauge cluster. I think that might have something to do with it because it was making the service vehicle soon light stay on and the traction light and with the original gauges i didn't have any lights on except for the check engine light and it was for the crank sensor and that's because this is a 3800 swap and a grand dam so the crank sensors are a little different but the way that gauge wired up the harness it works it just throws a code he said even his throws a code so but they still will start and run and you know do the job so that was the only code I had before. No other dash lights. Now I have dash lights. So I guess I was hoping this thing was just going to start up and it would stay running. But either way, it's uh, 
at least I found out that I had a, a broken coil. So that must have happened the last time I pulled the engine and trans to do the clutch. <clears throat> but I don't know. Hopefully, we don't have any more issues. So yeah, I've got this one on here. We verified like it started yesterday, and it after I swapped the coil pack, it wasn't sparking in here anymore and grounding out. So that should let the car run. Yeah, look, it didn't even get any fuel pressure off of that. So it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, it's it's been really just raining the last couple of days, so I haven't really done a whole lot. So as soon as we have another nice day where it's not raining, I will get the other fuel pump back out of here. It's, it's the ZZP Corvette fuel pump and a precision fuel pump canister with the lines. And so yeah, that will end up going back in here, which means I have to drop the tank back down. And then I'll have to go fill it up with the E85. And even then, I still need to do the slave in this. So even if I get it to run, it's not going to going to drive but even if I do the slave it might go in gear but if I can't get it to stay running then you know I can't really drive it either so that's uh that's my issues I'm having with the grain dam is the fuel pump issue and then it was the sparking issue but I got that figured out so yeah and then the slave of course which I have the brand new slave still in the trunk haven't messed with it so that's going to be that's going to be a, a good like weekend job to pull everything, do the slave, and put it back together again. And But yeah, so that's going to be the update for the Grand Dam. I thought it was going to start up, but it didn't. It is what it is. It started yesterday and ran for 20 seconds or so before it died. But it'll get there. She's, she's coming along. The, the car doesn't need very much stuff, and... She'll be ready to go. Oh yeah, and I got an E85 gas cap for it. <clears throat> just, just so I don't forget she's on E85 whenever I go to put fuel in. But yeah, I got the battery all charged up, so she's good. Running 13 volts on the battery. And so yeah, now uh, I guess I'll give you guys another update whenever I'm going to drop the tank on this thing and do the fuel pump. And we'll see if she'll start. All right, y'all, so got the fuel pump to kick on. Hmm. It is like 30 degrees out here. second y'all right, let's try this again
wonder if it's just too low on gas. Battery's getting low. What the hell is that noise? I wonder if there's just not enough octane in the E85, I don't fucking know. Maybe I need to put like half a tank of 91 in it, I'm sure it'll start with 91. Man, that sucks, alright. Try her again. It's like it's backfiring. Five minutes for this thing to start. Ah, uh, and there went the fuel pump. Ugh. No fuel pump. Yeah, definitely something with the fuel pump going on. But, it's alright.
There it went. I said I have. This is the ZZP Corvette pump and the Precision fuel pumps canister. This is what I had in it whenever the, the last engine started knocking. And then I've got the new slave in there as well. So I have the stuff to get it running and driving. It's just going to be a lot of work. And it's still like 30 degrees. It's only like a high of like 42. Oh, man, I wish she would just fire right up still. It sucks that she's having issues. But that's the car game. And then on this one, I did get the Optima Red Top from David back in here. And like I said, it just... It's locked up. It's deleted a piston. So this is going to be fun. Trying to... Uh, uh, to get the engine pulled. Especially leaving the transmission in. So I'm going to have to try to spin it over both ways on the crank pulley to see if maybe I can get it to rotate backwards a little bit to get that piston out of the way so I can at least spin it over but uh yeah this is uh this is gonna be a fun one I'm still looking forward to it um I've I'm got a gasket kit full engine gasket kit in my cart it's like 70 something dollars So, I've got to get that ordered. I uh, still need to order the new uh, oil pressure sensor. It's up here on the top. And, yeah, and then once I get that, I should be able to pull these heads off, the intake, everything off of this one. Put it onto this engine with all new fresh gaskets. I want to try to reuse these heads. I know for sure the front one should be good. The back one may be good, but it may not be good. It just depends on how much damage was done from the piston, from the looks of it, on the bore scope. Um, whenever we bore scope the cylinders, it almost kind of looked like the piston like rotated and fell down like below the cylinder and maybe is like wedged at the crank. I'm not for sure. Maybe the wrist pin broke or something. It looks like the rod is still in there. Um, I might go grab the boroscope just to show you guys again. But yeah, this is going to be a huge project. And then on top of the engine work, you know, it now also needs the hood, that headlight. And I still have not found the key. So I have found the fob. Put a brand new battery in the fob. Put power to the car. And it still doesn't do anything. Nothing at all. And this is the fob that I found in the back seat. And it's got a brand new battery from AutoZone. It was like $12 just for the battery. And uh, it doesn't work. So, kind of bummed on that whole situation, but, uh, yeah, this is just going to be a huge project. I still, I haven't given up on it, it's just going to be a huge project, and it's going to need quite a bit. And then on top of needing a key, and all the engine stuff, engine swap, uh, it could still need brakes, I know for sure it's going to need at least three tires. I'm probably just going to try to get all four. I've aired this tire up like six times in the last three weeks and it goes flat every two or three days. And yeah, so this thing, it's going to need quite a bit. Um, and then on top of both of these cars needing work and the transmission not being the greatest on the Trailblazer. So then my mom's car, she was driving it the other day and I guess whenever I got into the wreck, it was leaking coolant. As you can see, it's leaking coolant. And it got low. 
and uh, my mom drove it anyways and she said it started to overheat and instead of pulling over and calling me she just drove it anyways and I'm pretty sure it's blown the head gaskets so let's open this one yeah so somewhere over in this area either the plastic on the side over here is cracked but then also I hit the there we go down here we got both head gaskets are seeping there's the front one and then yeah, you can kind of see the rear one there's just so much Well, I guess my phone's dying, so there went the flash. But yeah, both head gaskets are just seeping horrible on the front and the back head. I don't have head gaskets or head bolts, but I have all the upper and lower intake and valve cover gaskets and like all the other gaskets and seals for the engine. I just don't have a oil pan gasket and I don't have head gaskets or head bolts. So now her engine's gonna have to come out. Look, it even looks like it was oh yeah maybe one of the lower intake bolts because that is all wet up here on the intake uh, so yeah this thing's gonna need a full gasket refresh still runs fine no noises or knocking or anything but uh yeah so now her car on top of these two being broke down now hers is broke down even though I fixed the damage from wrecking it, now it needs engine work. And then this one, I have the harness for it. It's back here in the trunk. So this is the original engine harness off of this car. And it's it had some, um, some shorts in the harness. We've had it repaired two or three times for this alternator wire so somewhere in here there was some shorts we had that fixed um, we had a short that was causing a battery drain so even when the car was off it was still pulling power from somewhere so we had those shorts fixed and the car was great for about a year a year and a half and then we started having a bunch of shorts again and the engine started making a knocking sound and now I don't even think it was the old engine I think it was like the alternator or the water pump or something because I did change the timing cover with the water pump and I changed the like pretty much everything off the original engine went back onto this engine because the Impala stuff is just a little bit different and yeah and whenever I swapped everything I decided just to put a whole new harness on it so I pulled this one off and the only thing that sucks was right here I cut off the, the piece that go it plugs into the ABS module uh, for the anti-lock brakes and since I had changed everything originally the first new harness I got, I changed to the newer style, like what's on the 04 Grand Am, and it wouldn't crank, and like nothing was working, the gauges didn't work, so then I went through like five more harnesses, and none of them were working, so then I found the harness that's on the car now, which was out of a 99 Malibu, which is the exact same plugs as this one. I want to say it's this plug yeah these two right here and these two go right by the alternator and uh, one of these I believe goes into the cam position sensor and then the other one goes to like the injectors and everything and so on with this harness that's in here now Let's see. So I'll show you. Uh, uh, 
yeah so these are the two I'm talking about right here so that's this one goes to the injectors and that's part of that same harness and then this one goes to the cam position sensor which is located right down here below the power steering pump and so this is the exact same style harness all the plugs are the same the only thing that's different well from the newer harnesses that I had was so this harness and the harness in the trunk both had the same older style ABS pump with one big single plug this new end has like I don't know four or five plugs that plug into it and now that I've had to go back to the older style harness the ABS just isn't going to work but whenever I changed the harness to the newer style I got this pump with every brake line for the whole car changed everything so that you know the ABS would plug in and work with the newer style harness and I guess there is still a leak from one of these lines on the top because I did notice the brake master is completely bone dry and we did notice that there was a leak down there before and the car's just been sitting so I was debating since all the other cars are broke down I was debating on just swapping the engine harness around again back to the original one and then that way the car would at least run and drive it's still gonna throw the crank sensor code and act like it's misfiring but it will still run and drive and but now on top of that now I need to fix brake lines fix the brake leak so uh, right now we have five vehicles and every one of them is broke down so this one's gonna need a harness and some brake work this one's gonna need all new engine gaskets and probably head gaskets and head bolts and then we ordered a new radiator for it it should be here sometime in the next four or five days so I'm waiting for the radiator for this still got to order head gaskets and head bolts that one I pretty much have everything I need except for brake fluid this one needs the fuel pump and the slave this one needs an engine and a key and this one and it's actually I drove it the last couple days I had to take my mom uh, to the doctor this morning and like it actually did good it's uh as long as i'm doing like 55 or 60 it stays in you know it does first second third it seems to do okay and but then if i try to go any faster than 60 it starts to slip and do it's from overdrive down to third and back to overdrive but as far as this i'll show you what this one's doing So this one, it will start. And then die. Just like that. It starts, runs for two or three seconds, and dies. And that has something to do with the harness. And then also, if I plug in the OBD2 to run the check engine light, it gets power, but it can't communicate with the car. I never had that issue with this car before. So, uh, there's just a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff to get done and it's freezing cold <laughs> I just wanted to give you guys an update on all the cars pretty much so yeah we have five vehicles and they're all broke the trailblazer it's been doing decent the last couple days like I said I can drive it uh, it's just I can't I don't know it's like it's leaked out fluid to where it's not leaking out any more fluid, but it's not full. So I don't know. It, I really don't know what to what to think about it. I mean, it sucks. I love the truck, but it's just it needs too much. So I did find. I was looking around on Facebook, and I found a white Trailblazer that said it runs and drives. Has two hundred thousand miles on it. And they put an AC compressor and 
a couple other things on it and they have it listed for 450 and I offered them 400 so I mean I don't really need another vehicle right now but it has no title I figured if anything you know if I can go get it drive it around make sure it shifts good I might consider doing the transmission one more time just because if I can test it and I know 100% that it's good then I will do it and then I'll always I can put this trans back into the, the other truck or if I end up being able to get a title for the other truck then I, I could just take all my shit and put it onto that one because it's not wrecked on the driver's side but yeah that's kind of that's kind of where I'm sitting at I haven't heard back from the owner of the, uh, the white one so I don't know if they even still have it it said it was listed two months ago but yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update on the Green Dam, mainly. That's what I started this video off as. I don't know why she's, the Green Dam didn't want to just fire right back up. It was doing good the other day. <clears throat> but yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. So I guess that's going to be it. My phone's about to die. I'm at like 5%, so... I guess uh, that's going to be it for now, you guys. So, I guess uh, hit the like button, subscribe, leave me a comment down below, and I'll uh, catch you guys in the next one.